Picture a country so small you could cross it in less than an hour, yet so affluent it tops global wealth charts. Welcome to Liechtenstein, a nation that challenges our very understanding of what prosperity means. Nestled between Switzerland and Austria, this diminutive land has a story that's anything but small. It's a tale that flips the script on the David and Goliath narrative, proving that size isn't the ultimate measure of success. But how did Liechtenstein, once a sleepy agricultural valley, vault itself into the ranks of the world's richest nations? What's the secret formula that turned this underdog into an economic titan? If you're intrigued, you're not alone. A secluded valley surrounded by the towering Alps where life was dictated by the seasons. That was Liechtenstein in the 19th century. The country was primarily agricultural, a place where farmers tilled the land and shepherds grazed their flocks. But it wasn't as idyllic as it sounds. The land could only support a small population, around 8,000 people, leading many to seek opportunities elsewhere. Immigration was rampant, especially to the Americas, as people sought a better life. In addition, the country's economy at the time was a simple one, revolving around agriculture and some textile production. The people of Liechtenstein were self-reliant, growing their own food and making their own clothes. But this simplicity came at a cost. The country was vulnerable to external shocks, be it economic downturns or natural disasters. When crops failed or markets crashed, people felt the pinch. Yet they persevered. They had to there was no other choice. The sense of community was strong, and people helped each other in times of need. It was a tough life, but it was their life, and they made the best of it. As the years passed, Liechtenstein began to see slow but steady changes. The introduction of new farming techniques and tools helped increase yields. Small businesses started to emerge, particularly in the textile industry, providing an alternative source of income. Yet, Liechtenstein could not break free from the cycle of poverty and isolation. Then, industrialization began sweeping across Europe, and it was at this time it became especially clear that something needed to change for Liechtenstein. But what could that change be, and how would it come about? The answer lay just around the corner, in a partnership that would alter the course of Liechtenstein's history forever. The year 1923 marked a watershed moment for Liechtenstein. The country entered into a customs union with Switzerland, a move that would redefine its economic landscape. But why Switzerland? The Swiss were neighbors, yes, but they were also economically stable and politically neutral. It was a partnership that made sense on many levels. The customs union allowed for free trade between the two countries, eliminating tariffs and trade barriers. This was a game changer for Liechtenstein. Suddenly, the country had access to markets it had never dreamed of. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. The global economic landscape was fraught with challenges, not least of which was the Great Depression of the 1930s. Countries around the world were tightening their belts, and Liechtenstein was no exception. However, the customs union with Switzerland provided a safety net buffering the country from the worst of the economic downturn. It was a testing time, but it also proved the resilience and adaptability of this tiny nation. Then came World War II, a conflict that would change the world order. But how did it affect Liechtenstein, a country that chose to remain neutral? What role did this partnership with Switzerland play during these tumultuous times? And most importantly, how did the ensuing chaos set the stage for Liechtenstein's future economic development. World War II was a time of upheaval and devastation for much of Europe, but Liechtenstein managed to navigate these treacherous waters with remarkable skill. The country's neutrality, coupled with its strategic partnership with Switzerland, provided a unique advantage. While many nations were embroiled in conflict, Liechtenstein became a sanctuary for both assets and people. The country's banking sector saw an influx of foreign capital seeking a safe haven from the war. But it wasn't just the capital that found refuge in Liechtenstein, people did too. The country opened its doors to those fleeing the horrors of war, including a significant number of Jewish families. 
This humanitarian act not only saved lives, but also brought new skills and talents into the country. Some of these refugees would go on to play a crucial role in Liechtenstein's post-war development. Nevertheless, as the war drew to a close, Liechtenstein faced a new set of challenges. The influx of capital and talent had provided a temporary boost, but for long-term growth, the country needed to diversify its economy. The government recognized this and began laying the groundwork for what would become a multifaceted, resilient economy. The end of the war marked the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. Liechtenstein was about to step onto the global stage, but how would it fare? And what steps did it take to integrate itself into the international community? Liechtenstein, you see, was already working with Switzerland, but this was not enough by any means. So, keen to avoid the pitfalls of economic isolation, it soon sought to diversify its economy and look for even more opportunities beyond its borders. One of the first steps was joining international organizations that could provide both economic and political stability. Liechtenstein became a member of the European Free Trade Association, or EFTA, and later joined the European Economic Area, EEA, and the World Trade Organization, WTO. These memberships were not just symbolic, they had a tangible impact on the country's economy. Being part of these organizations gave Liechtenstein access to new markets and allowed it to attract foreign investment. The country also benefited from the free movement of goods, services, and people, which was particularly important for a small nation with limited resources. This led to an economic boom. But joining the global community wasn't without its challenges. Liechtenstein had to navigate complex regulations and ensure that its industries met international standards. The country also had to deal with the scrutiny that comes with being a global financial center. But before we dive into the details of it, take a moment to subscribe to our channel and join our community. And don't forget to give this video a like. Your quick and easy actions not only help us keep creating content you love, but also ensure you're a part of our journey every step of the way. So, you might be wondering, after overcoming international scrutiny and complex regulations, what was Liechtenstein's ace in the hole? What specific industries or technologies catapulted this small nation into the limelight? And how did the government and private sector collaborate to fuel this industrial boom? You might think Liechtenstein is all about banking and finance, but you'd be wrong. It's the manufacturing sector that truly transformed the country into an economic powerhouse. Accounting for a staggering 41.6% of the GDP, manufacturing became the lifeblood of Liechtenstein's economy. But this wasn't just any manufacturing. Liechtenstein specialized in high-tech, high-quality products. From machine and tool engineering to precision instruments, the country carved out a niche for itself in specialized industries. Companies like Hilti, a global leader in products, systems, and services for the construction industry, became household names. Another example is Evoclar Vivident, a global leader in innovative materials and processes for quality dentistry. These companies didn't just succeed, they set industry standards. The government played a crucial role in this transformation. While it didn't provide direct subsidies, it created an environment conductive to business. Low corporate taxes, strong intellectual property laws, and a highly skilled workforce made Liechtenstein an attractive destination for manufacturers. The country also invested heavily in research and development, ensuring that its industry stayed competitive on the global stage. But guess what? Though not the largest sector, financial services still account for 21.1% of the nation's GDP. You see, after World War II, the country was at a crossroads. It had a stable economy, thanks to its manufacturing sector, but it needed something more to secure its future. That's when the financial sector started to take off. Initially, it was a slow burn. The country's banking sector was still in its infancy, but the seeds for growth were already there. Remember the influx of foreign capital during the war? It had given Liechtenstein a taste of what was possible, and it was eager for more. Recognizing the potential of the financial sector, the government implemented a series of reforms aimed at attracting foreign investment. 
tax incentives were offered, and banking laws were revised to make Liechtenstein an attractive destination for international capital. And it worked. By the 1980s, the country had become a global financial hub, specializing in private banking and wealth management. But this rapid growth came with its own set of challenges. Liechtenstein had to ensure that its financial sector was not just profitable, but also transparent and well-regulated. This is where things get interesting. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, Liechtenstein found itself under the international spotlight for all the wrong reasons. Accusations of money laundering and financial misconduct threatened to tarnish the country's reputation. It was a crucial moment, but Liechtenstein had to act fast. The government introduced yet another slew of regulatory measures, including stricter compliance checks and enhanced due diligence procedures. International organizations like the International Monetary Fund, IMF, were called in to assess the country's financial practices, and Liechtenstein passed with flying colors. Today, the country has managed to carve out a niche for itself in the highly competitive world of international finance. It specializes in services like private asset management, global asset structuring, and investment funds. And it's not just about numbers, it's about innovation, too. Liechtenstein has been quick to embrace new technologies, including blockchain and fintech solutions, further solidifying its position as a global financial powerhouse. Still not impressed? Well, how is it for a fact that Liechtenstein offers more jobs than its entire population? Yes, a country with a population of just over 39,000 provides more than 70,000 jobs globally. That's almost twice its population. What's even more interesting is that over 14% of its population is employed in the United States alone. But let's dig a little deeper. How does a country with a GDP of approximately $6.2 billion manage to provide so many jobs? Well, it's all about strategic international expansion. Remember the Liechtenstein companies we just discussed? They're not just local heroes, they're global champions. They've expanded their operations worldwide, setting up branches and partnerships in various countries. This global reach has created job opportunities not just for the people of Liechtenstein, but for individuals around the world. Liechtenstein's largest employer, Hilti Corporation, employs over 30,000 people worldwide. That's almost the entire population of Liechtenstein. And it's not just Hilti. Ivo Klar Vivident, a global leader in dental products, employs around 3,500 people globally. It's a win-win situation. The country gains international influence, and people worldwide benefit from employment opportunities. And it's not just in the private sector. Liechtenstein's University of Applied Sciences, for example, has partnerships with educational institutions in countries like Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. These partnerships offer research opportunities and academic positions, further extending Liechtenstein's role as a global job provider. But it's not just about quantity, it's about quality too. Liechtenstein's companies are known for their high standards, innovation, and ethical practices. This reputation has made them employers of choice in many countries, attracting top talent and contributing to local economies. So there you have it. Liechtenstein isn't just a dot on the map, it's a dot that decided to connect the dots. In a world obsessed with big names and big numbers, this tiny nation reminds us that sometimes the most extraordinary stories come from the most unexpected places. Who knew that a secluded valley could teach the world a thing or two about wealth, innovation, and sheer willpower? That's it for today. Hope you got value while watching the video. And if you still have questions or comments, don't hesitate to share them in the comments section below. And if you are interested in more videos about economics, make sure to check out the video linked on the screen next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.